In today's video, we're taking a look at five new features that I really like in the 2025.5 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Update 2025.5 is a big quality of life release, focusing on refinements and new features that help make Home Assistant feel that little bit easier to use. Kicking this off then with my first new feature, and we've got some new voices for text-to-speech. If you're a Home Assistant Cloud subscriber, then you're more than likely already aware of all of the high quality voices that are provided as part of your subscription. Previously, the voices available offered a few variations which just gave different voice tones, but in this latest release, voices now feature styles as well as variations. This means you can now have your announcements sound friendly, sad, angry, whispery, and a whole bunch more. What's really nice to see is these new styles have been added across the board, across a bunch of the languages that are currently available. And I imagine over time that more languages, as they're added, they're going to support more of these styles and they're all just going to be expanded upon. Up next then, we've got a brand new UI change that I think you're going to love as it really does help making naming entities much, much easier. The entity picker, which is that small little drop down that you'll see whenever you're choosing an entity within your automations, your scripts, or within your cards. Well, this little drop down's received an update and it will now show both the device and also the area that that entity belongs to. This might sound really trivial, but because that information is shown, it makes it really easy to name your entities as you don't need to prefix the device type or area in the device's name. This new change makes it super clear what the entity is and also where it is and you don't need to go finding the device by its ID. If you've grown accustomed to using the device IDs and just seeing the device IDs everywhere then you can actually turn this back on by using a simple toggle within your settings. Carrying on then with my third new feature and we've got some enhancements for Z-Wave. The first new enhancement is an update to the smart start process which allows you to add your Z-Wave devices straight into Home Assistant just by scanning its QR code. The second enhancement is the addition of support for long range Z-Wave devices. So if you've got any of those devices, you will start being able to add those devices straight into Home Assistant and actually start being able to use them. And if you didn't know, the guys over at Home Assistant are actually working on their own Z-Wave antenna. So in the coming releases, expect more Z-Wave things to just happen. Moving on to feature four, and we've got some YAML UI improvements. You can now directly copy and paste raw blocks of YAML straight into the automation editor where it will automatically be converted to the visual editor format. This means if you find some code online that you want to use or you're following along with the tutorial and they provided the YAML, you can just simply copy and paste it in and then just update the relevant parts of the automation or script or whatever it is with your own entities. One of the other really nice YAML UI changes is a change to how templates work. Previously, if you included a template within your automation, it would convert the whole thing into the YAML version, but now it will actually only convert that one section that is the template, and the rest will all be the visual UI. And last, but definitely not least, we've got Feature 5, which is a brand new visual diagnostic tool for network discovery. If you've ever sat there scratching your head wondering why Home Assistant can't see a device on your network, or maybe you're just curious as to what Home Assistant can actually see, well, we've now got an inbuilt tool that will allow us to do all of these things, all without leaving Home Assistant and all without using any external tools. If you head into your settings, then system, then network, you'll find three new discovery browsers all baked into the UI. The first is the DHCP browser. This will show any devices that are discovered via DHCP, ARP and PTR lookups, and also router-based trackers. Basically, whenever you join something to your network and it gets an IP address, that should show up within this list, and this will make it easy to find devices that you don't normally add in typical ways. Next is the SSDP browser, and this one will list any of the devices that are found using the SSD protocol. The last one then is ZeroConf, and this one will show you any device that's found with MDNS, and this will be things like speakers, light bulbs, and other devices on your network that just announce themselves. In this list, you'll see any of those devices, but in this list, it's worth noting that these are things that are just shown that are discovered on your network. They're not things that Home Assistant are actively looking for. And there we go, guys. That's been a quick look at five of the new features that I've really liked in this update. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. 
These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.